is Thanksgiving morning 2021 and I thought I'd bring you along with what I'm doing this morning all I've got to do well I do have one more thing I've got to do in addition to I wasn't planning on it but yeah it's got to be done but um, when I got up this morning I put the turkey back in my bathtub to make sure it's finished thawing out so it's down in the bathtub with the water heating up the oven I am doing another batch of the keto cornbread because obviously I made that other batch of keto cornbread too early and now I don't have enough <laughs> to uh, I don't have enough for my keto cornbread dressing but I did locate my pecan meal so this is what I'm going to use and it's the Whaley Pecan Company. This is where I got this from. It's, um, there's the address, I guess. Troy, Alabama. So, all kind of pecan products. So, I got this from an online order. One of my co-workers orders in bulk. So, we kind of all order together and pay what, what our portion is. So, instead of that, um, what was it flaxseed or whatever it was I put in for the texture I'm using this so I'm going to put about two tablespoons of this down in here what I've got in here so far is about two and a half cups or so of almond flour two teaspoons of baking powder baking powder and I need to add a little salt to that and my pecan meal over here I've just got my my four eggs about a quarter cup of heavy whipping cream over here a couple of tablespoons of water and so I'm gonna I'm gonna add my pecan meal to it and stir that around I got everything stirred up in here mixed together I had to add a, another splash of water and a little bit of the cream because the, it was too thick but that's good and I got my trivet pulled out and the, the uh, skillets in the oven and I did add my cornbread flavoring this just makes such a big difference but I'm gonna I'm just gonna wait on the oven to heat up and the skillet to heat well the ovens heated up the skillet's got to heat up so waiting on that and then I'll get that poured into the skillet and in the oven to bake and I've already got my dishwasher going this morning all right the next thing I'm gonna get on I've got about five more minutes on that cornbread so um, I wanted to do a loaded cauliflower so I need to uh, cut these heads apart, take, take that off, and wash them up, and get these steamed up. Alright, the uh, cornbread is out, and letting that cool, I've got my pot holder here to remind me that this is still very hot. And I'm going to do my, I'm going to do some loaded cauliflower, and all I've done is cut these up, this is two little, they weren't very big, so I got two heads of cauliflower, and I cut them up and washed them in the sink, and I'm just going to let these go on high in the crock pot until they're tender, and then I'll continue on with that, but I like using, you know, I like doing a crock pot recipe for Thanksgiving because it just frees up, you know, that's one less pan in the oven, right? So I'm going to put the lid on this and let it go. I did spray the inside real good so we're gonna let that go uh, move this now this is my pan that I do my turkey on I got this know, a couple of years ago I guess at, at uh, Sam's but it's a nice big you see how big that is it's over half of the size of the top of my stove so big pan and I'm gonna get to working on my turkey next all right, I've pulled my turkey out of the oven. I'm just going to use my scissors. These are just regular cheap pair of scissors that I use in the kitchen to cut open packages and stuff. So I'm just going to use this and cut into this. And got it in the sink here. When I get done with this being in the sink, I will obviously clean my sink. But um, yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get started on this. I've got the turkey out of the packaging. And I, I always make sure I check the cavity because all this came out of the cavity and I pull that little pop-up timer out of the breast area because I don't need it. And then they had this little thing over there holding the legs together and I don't need that either. So, and that's all the giblets 
So here's the turkey and what I really need to do is lift this up and take this off because I need to be able to work with this thing without the uh, without that but I do need to use this to the the uh, the rack here to cook it on but all I'm gonna do where's my scissors here they are okay I've got these really nice poultry shears and I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna cut down either side of that backbone and take that backbone completely out all right, that took about a minute, or oh well, a minute up one side, a minute up one other side. So two minutes to get that backbone out. These shears are awesome. Just cuts right through the bone. Now sometimes I do it when it gets to the like rib cage area there in the back. I have to use both hands, both of my hands to get it to go through the bones, but just cuts right through the bones. And I've got this put over here for the next step. All right, here's the turkey and it's all thought out. So what I need to do is flip it over. And so now I need to get this flat. And I also need to move that cornbread. So I'm just going to have to, um, okay, I'm really short. So I have to get my step stool and stand on it because I'm going to press down here with both hands right there like that to, to crack, it, the purpose is to crack that breastbone so that this will lay flat. Um, it's almost like giving CPR, so I'm going to move the cornbread, and then I'm going to push that down, and then I'll be ready for the next step. What I've done here is, okay, let me see if I can describe what I do. I take one hand and push down here, and then I take this hand and pull up here, trying to get it flat. And I do the same thing on the other side, only I push down with my right and pull up with my left. That gets this flat as flat as it can be and I've got the the legs laid out this way and then I went in with my hand and loosened up all of this skin trying to be careful not to, to go through because that um, pop-up timer already left one hole in it so um, yeah I got all the skin loosened up and the next thing I'm gonna do I probably won't need all this butter because this is only a 10 pound bird so I'm just going to take, I've cut this up into little pats of butter and I'm going to roll it around and all this is is seasonal, Morton seasonal. I have so much of this from a good, I bought a deal a while back, so I might as well use it. So I'm going to roll around each piece in that and just spread it all up under this skin. All right, I used probably a stick and a half, maybe not quite half. Um, that's what's left. I moved this over to this because this portion of this plate is now all turkey juices and everything. And this is what I've got left in this little container. I'm just going to discard this because I had turkey hands dealing with this. I think I've probably already washed my hands a dozen times since I've been dealing with the turkey. Well, let me show you what I did. I got, uh, so I rolled around each little piece and I've got it spread all under the skin. I've got a lot of it on the breast because for me that's what seems to dry out the most. And I've got like a pat on each leg and a pat on each thigh. And I didn't uh, pull the skin up here on the wings. I just kind of tucked a pat in down in there. And I, I like to fold the wings back underneath the back of the turkey. So, but this is all ready to go in the oven. Let me get this in the oven. Okay. The turkey's in and I've set it for um, 350 degrees for an hour and a half and every 30 minutes I'm just going to go in and kind of turn the pan completely around so that you know right now I've got the uh, the next side in the back of the oven then I'll turn it around and put the bottom side in the back and uh, just let that go and then I'll take its temperature when it, when I when that when that goes down I'll take its temperature. Now over here is where I've just got, let's see, i got to put that away, but I've got this out and this, I've got two more sticks of butter out and I like to have this stuff, the chill off of it from the refrigerator and I need these eggs for the cornbread dressings and I'm going to clean all this up. I could save all this and, um, you know, make turkey broth out of it, but I just don't have time for that right now. <laughs> My life is a little busy. So I'm just going to toss this. By the way, if you 
have an opportunity to get a garbage can like this one, y'all, this is awesome. So it's shut, and I just wave my hand, and it opens. I do not have to touch this, so I just picked up all that poultry and dumped it in here. And as long as it's like a motion sensor down here, and yes, it has batteries, but I don't care, y'all. This is so convenient, and see, it just shuts itself, and I just wipe it down with uh, wet wipes and everything, but so convenient, and it's got these little these little things here to hold the bag in place and you can still take it out outside and wash out the inside but love this garbage can so now that I am am done with with um, raw poultry I have scrubbed out both sides of my sink and ready to tackle another thing I do still have to um, I still got to put up my pecan meal I do I do have to wash this um, really it's just hot water and then dry it with a paper towel and it, it's good to go because I love this thing. This thing is, y'all, I don't know, it's probably older than my dad and he's in his 80s. So, yeah, love this iron skillet. And I'm going to get some more coffee and I, it may be, it may be more than one pot of coffee this morning because obviously I need it. Heavy duty cooking day, so I don't normally drink this much coffee, but I think I'm going to today. So, um, let me see the next step. So this has been going. This is this is just my cauliflower, and I'm just going to let this go. And when it's done, I will see um, so the lids. The lids warm, but when it's done, I'll just if there's any liquid in the bottom, I will drain that off because I won't all the liquid gone and then I'll probably uh, mash it up with my immersion blender and I'm gonna add butter and um, bacon and cheese and all this you know all this kind of stuff to this so this is going to be loaded cauliflower I'm starting on the regular traditional southern cornbread dressing now and I took that uh, all, all, of, all of the cornbread that I made the other night and crumbled it up into this bowl I've got the boiled eggs right here, the whites of them, and I'm going to put about half in this and save the other half for the other pan the for the keto. I do have this that I picked up at Walmart. It was uh, free on an Ibotta rebate, so I'm just going to add what's in this package to it. In the past, I've used... Um, like crumbled up a sleeve of crackers. Well, I don't have any crackers, but I do have this, and it's got seasonings in it, so I'm just going to add this to that, and going to put some of this, half of this, in here, and i got to get my chicken broth out. The other thing I'm going to do is add a little bit, oh, not, not that side, I'm going to add a little of this just to season it up and I'm gonna go easy on this because I cannot taste this for seasoning so I'm going to um, put put about that much because I don't think that's enough therefore it might be enough for my daughter because I can't taste it let me get um, hang on these are the vegetables the onions and um, uh, celery and, and everything that I cooked in butter so I heated this up in the microwave because I need the butter melted so that it can distribute so I'm gonna pour this is one container I have this other container for the other batch but I'm gonna dump all of this in to that bowl okay everything's in and I've opened and yes my bowl is very full so I've, I've got this reduced sodium chicken broth and I'm just going to start pouring it in um, so I'm going to pour it in and stir it around and this is kind of an eyeball sort of thing to do let me get this uh, stirred up okay this is about where I like my dressing to be the it looks like I don't know how to explain this it's a sound so you can hear the moisture and so that's how it sounds and um, 
you can see the moisture but it's like not puddling up but that's the sound so this is the point where you would taste it to, to taste for seasoning but I'm not gonna do that my daughter's not up she's still in bed so I'm now gonna add I'm gonna beat up um, three eggs and mix those in and then I'm gonna get it in my casserole dish I beat up the eggs now I just have to fold these in I just want to get get these thoroughly mixed in with this and then I'm gonna put it over here um, I used most of this container and this is one of those big three pound containers of chicken broth and the reason um, I pop these over here into this I don't want to put those plastic containers with the sauteed veggies in the microwave so um, I just put it in a in a pie plate and put it in the glass pie plate, pie plate and put it in the microwave to heat it up because I want all the butter melty so that it can spread throughout and then I've got I've got my sprayed pan here I just throw these in the sink and spray them so that I don't get spray everywhere okay I'll be back when I'm done with this okay I have washed my bowl and basically did the same thing with the keto cornbread except um, added the same things to it I added the rest of the um, egg whites that I chopped but I also added the chicken the rotisserie chicken that I chopped to this and um, I'm just going to get this stirred up and I'm going to again add I know I'm going to have to add this whole because there's not much left in here so I'm just going to pour all this in and then I'm going to stir it up and see because I've still got I've still got more of this cornbread so I'm just I think I might need to add a little bit more to it but we'll see when I get it all stirred up for the keto, well this is the keto dressing, it's the same process and I'm still listening for that moist, moist sound like that. And the only difference is, of course I used keto cornbread and then I added some uh, the chopped chicken to it. So I'm going to get this in the pan over there and I'll show you what I got in a minute. Okay, here are my two pans of dressing. This is the regular dressing. This is the keto dressing. Now all I have to do is crumble up these and sprinkle them over the top. You can see there's a difference. This one's a little more yellow than this one is. But um, I'm gonna get I'm gonna get these crumbled up, these egg yolks, and I'm gonna sprinkle them over the top and I'll bring you back. All right, I have got the, uh, that one's kind of clumped up. I've got the egg yolks, the boiled egg yolks, sprinkled over the top. And the reason I do this is because my grandmother did this. And it's all about tradition. So, now, now that they're covered, they look alike, don't they? So, my key to remembering which one is keto and which one's regular is the keto stays on the right. You just got to figure out a system, and the keto is always going to be on the right. When they go in the oven, the keto pan is going to be on the right, and they're going to stay on the counter with the keto one on the right. Next up is green bean casserole. This is just regular green bean casserole, nothing special except I have to do a double batch. So when I do a double batch, I add a big can of the cream of mushroom soup, and it's just the Great Value brand. Put that in there, and I'll rinse that out with my heavy cream over there. And I don't know, y'all. The first, the first time I ever made this recipe, it always called for soy sauce. The recipe, the first recipe I ever made. So I always just put a little of that in, and that'll be enough. And then some black pepper, just some black pepper. And a little bit of salt. Not much. Okay, that's plenty. And what I have here is I've got two of these Members Mark Steaming Bag Whole Green Beans. Two bags of that. So, and now I'm just going to, I'm going to pour this. I'm going to pour some heavy cream in here and add, no I'm not. No, I'm not. This is for my daughter. It's not for me. Let me get the almond milk. 
I've added the almond milk in and I don't think it's enough. Um, I'm just gonna, I need both hands. I need to hold the bowl and stir this around. Let me lay the, let me lay this down. I think I'm gonna add just a little more liquid and I've added, let me show you this. I've got, I got this at Walmart. It was on and I bought a rebate. So it, I got, I paid for it, but then I got all my money back. So that was free. So I just added those half of them to this. I'm going to stir that around and then when it's almost done, I'm going to pour this, when I get done mixing all this up, I'm going to pour it in the pan and I'm going to save the rest of the onions for the top after, uh, like five minutes before it's done. I decided that I didn't quite have enough of the green beans, but I didn't want to open another whole bag of this, so I just added one can of the French stock. And the canned are a little different color, and I do prefer to use the frozen ones, but this will be fine. I'm going to pour this in my dish. Okay, here is everything waiting on the oven to clear out for the from the turkey, and my turkey's got about 20 minutes left. So I'm going to clean up my mess. This over here, the cauliflower is doing doing fine. Um, yeah, I need to. I've got a mess. I've got to clean. Okay, I will be back. The turkey is out of the oven, and it is done. Let me, uh, let me poke this in here, and I don't want to hit a bone. So it needs to be at 165, and there we are. Now let's go over here to a, to a uh, thigh area, and we're there again see so it is done it's not the prettiest but you know what I'm good with it because it's cooked through the skin is very crispy and it's juicy all every every piece of meat is juicy and I got my dressings in the oven and my green bean casserole and I've set the timer for another hour so it looks like I'm on schedule to uh, serve around noon. The turkey has cooled enough for me to be able to touch it, although it is still very warm. But I am going to go ahead and take this apart and I'll show you what it looks like in just a few minutes. Okay, <laughs> I've taken the bird apart and there's not much left on there. But I'm probably going to just uh, put this in a zipper bag and um, yeah, not a whole lot left on there. But I've got all the breast meat here and I just took it all off. Here, I cut right down here and then across here and then sliced it up and I always pull the skin away because I, I get better slices that way and this is all the dark meat so I've separated the legs and the thighs and then over here I've got the wings and um, today we'll probably just eat on the breast meat because it's our favorite and um, yeah this this was just all kind of you know I just pulled this off so I'm going to cover this with tin foil and I'll be back when the rest of the, uh, oh, let me show you this. This is the cauliflower and I just took my tater masher and mashed it up and I added what was left in this, probably half a cup of bacon bits. And then I added some sharp cheddar and a stick of butter and that's really good. Oh, salt and pepper. Okay, battery is dying, so I need to change it. All right, guys. It's just after 12 o'clock noon on Thanksgiving Day, and everything is done. Um, here's my... I've already ba uh, bagged up the dark meat and the back of uh, the carcass. So here's all the white meat. And there is the regular cornbread dressing. There's the green bean casserole, and here is the keto cornbread dressing. And then over here is the uh, loaded cauliflower. And I was going to do a can of green beans, but y'all, I, I don't need another side. <laughs> because while I'm only going to have the turkey and the this dressing and this, I, th I think that's enough for me. And, you know... So I'm going to say Thanksgiving dinner is done. Well, that is 
everything that I did this morning on Thanksgiving morning, it was done just after 12 o'clock noon. And I'm tired. I'm ready to go sit down and eat. So I'm going to call my daughter and we're going to eat Thanksgiving dinner. But I hope y'all all have a happy Thanksgiving and I'll see y'all later. Bye.